How's everybody? Charlie, come here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. 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 I won't make you get up. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Andre. Yeah. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Luke. Uh, this is my business partner, Jeff, and this is our brand strategist, George. Hi. We're in, uh, in town for a little event. And if you want. Okay, let me do the quick introduction. Luke, did you already take care of that? I just, I just well, shook, shook some hands. Look, we launched the uh, enrollment program last week, right? We could, just, we could just talk about it and not do anything about it, or we could actually deploy and execute. And that's what we want to do. So I reached out to Luke. He's in Dallas. What are you in Dallas for this week? So uh, we're in Dallas for a little bit of a software training for some, some of the software that we use at our agency. Okay. And so um, we, we met each other a year, maybe even longer ago, on social. I highly respect what Luke and his team does in the social media world. And um, I said, listen, we just did this program. Would you come on in and talk to us? How do we get better at social media? We use the social media both as a company but also in the – Entrepreneur world of building a personal right. brand inside That's of our brand. Right. Okay, yeah. and uh, Luke was gracious enough to bring his team and talk to us for half an hour. All right, so let's get better. I appreciate it. And yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, man. Thanks okay. for having us. You got it. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you guys. I didn't get to shake your all's hands. Um, so, just a quick little backstory on on who I am and, and why I believe so much on on personal brand and. There's many vehicles. Everything you do, if you walk out there, you pull out the parking lot, you cut somebody off. That's that's branding bad branding. Everything that we do is a personal is going towards your personal brand. Um, we've built our company off of personal branding. Um, I'm mainly the face of the company, but Jeff's personal brand, what he does in and out of networking meetings, what he does on social media, what I'm doing day in and day out, uh, personal branding is everything. You do business with those that you know, that you like, and that you trust. Um, and, you know, Matt and I were having a conversation to where some of that pressure on the team members, the employees, isn't as much as what it is on Matt. It, 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 you guys can brand the culture and the expertise of the company to why you guys are the leaders of the individuals to use if you want to get taken care of. But I still firmly believe that the most important investment you guys can make, whether it's monetary or energy and effort put into this, is your personal brand. Every sing, single thing that we do is going to make you think of a certain thing. So when I say you know luxury vehicle, you guys are going to think of maybe Lexus, BMW, Mercedes Benz, Maserati. It, it's a, it's the same thing. It's a vehicle that gets you from point A to point B. A Honda, while there's obviously some technical differences than a Maserati, they get you from point A to point B. It's certain things that they've done to make you think that that's what wealthy people drive. I've done very well for myself if I drive that. The same thing with the actions you all are taking can make you think a certain way about somebody like myself if I own a trucking company, think a certain way about CFF and maybe differently from one of your competitors. Maybe you're the Maserati, obviously, of this industry and there's some folks that maybe aren't. Customer care, the way that you, know, you talk to somebody on the phone goes much further than what you would think. So how does it relate back to social media? Well, obviously, 15 years ago, if you have a bad experience or a great experience at a restaurant, and you go and tell you know two or three of your friends, they're going to hear it. Maybe they tell two or three of their friends, and then it kind of stops there. But today, anything that we do, it's amplified, which can be good and can be bad. Obviously, if somebody says something negative about you, it's, it's a much bigger deal today than it was 10 years ago. But the, the impact that you have on people on social media showing what your company is doing for the, you know, the, the commercial fleet world has a much bigger impact and can spread much further today than it ever did before. The problem is most people look at it as, well, I don't have time for that. It's, 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 it's marketing. These things are sales tools. I usually grab my phone and hold it up, but George is holding it. That is a sales tool. It should be looked at as an extension just like the headset piece that so many of you guys and gals wear. It is a sales tool. Daily, we're closing you know, six-figure to $10,000 deals off of something sometimes as simple as a live stream. I did a live stream providing value, that's the biggest thing. Everything you put out needs to be value driven. You don't sell on these platforms. That's why it's a much longer term play. And if you start to sell on these platforms, you post two or three things and then it's, you go right to hard sell because that's obviously you know, what you're trained to do. That's gonna turn people off. But if you can genuinely find a way to show the value that this company provides and make it interesting, and it can be, Gary Vaynerchuk says document, don't create showing the culture in the business 
A happy company is going to provide you, obviously, a happy service and a pleasurable service. So showing that and documenting what you guys are doing inside the company and taking care of your customers, even though you know you post two or three videos or live streams and you're like, well, nothing's come from that yet, it is a long-term play. I had a gentleman beginning of last year who said, I've been following you on Twitter and Instagram uh, and a few other platforms since 2012. And I said, when I need a social media expert, I'm going to come to you. One of the leading medical experts in, in our state. And never heard of the guy, had no idea what he did, but he came to us and it was a very large deal. And he had been following the content that I put out since 2012 through Twitter, through Instagram, through Facebook. And when he said, when it's, when it's that time, I'm gonna reach out to this individual. And when it was that time, he didn't even think about my competitors. So you can rely on you know, what Matt does with his personal brand and with just the general marketing of the company, but you can also take it upon yourself to pick up that sales tool that's in your pocket and just share your expertise on what you're doing put that out to the world, document what you all are doing here as a company. I mean, what you guys do in the morning, your, your, your morning scrums every morning, there's some companies that don't do that. And when I see that, I'm like, wow, these guys are operating at a higher level than someone else. And that's what's gonna provide value to somebody else, seeing that these people are operating at a higher level than somebody else that I might have an option of purchasing from. So it, it's just knowing that, again, it's a long-term play. You're not gonna put two or three things out and then see everything change. Um, you're not gonna brand yourself as the you know, CFF rock star by doing two or three posts. You're also not gonna do it by doing two or three or 100 posts that again, it's contact us for this, contact us for this, contact us for this. It's, it's again, it's what can you say that provides value to your audience? And by providing value, that means it's interesting, it's informational, it's entertaining. So I find what you guys do as sales professionals extremely entertaining. I love the hunt. I'm the sales force of the business. Um, I love the hunt. People also respect that and see how hard you guys are working to earn other people's businesses and what you're doing to follow up to make sure that they were taken care of. And I don't know your process, but maybe sharing some of that and what it's like to come into the CFF family as a customer, as a client, and what that journey looks like. You don't always have to rely on the marketing and, and the you know, the guy at the top's personal brand to do that. It's very important for all of you to share those stories. So let me, help, help me stay on, on time if you don't okay, mind. Um, how, how many people are using social media at any capacity to, to brand yourself within the company? Mm -hmm. you, do you consider LinkedIn as social media as well? I do. Mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn is a tricky one. It's kind of the, um, it's the suit and tie version of Facebook. How many people are on LinkedIn every single day? Great. Some people are not. I'm on LinkedIn a few times a month, but when I go there, I'm trying to put valuable content. I don't always browse the content. I think it's an uglier platform, and I think a lot of people look at it as a resume building tool, so they're not there consuming as much as Facebook. So I obviously plan my attack knowing that in mind. I, I'm there, but I'm also making sure that I'm on Facebook because Matt might be on LinkedIn, or somebody just like Matt might be on LinkedIn, but they're really consuming that content on Facebook. I think LinkedIn is a great tool because it, allow, it, is the, it is the best sales tool for social media that there ex exists. If I'm trying, so we work, we work with like Major League Baseball, um, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, um, Harley Davidson. So if I'm trying to find somebody that is in the key position that I need at one of these companies, and I know I have a meeting with you know, Matt today, and I'm not friends with him on Facebook, but I need to learn a little bit about this gentleman before I meet with him. LinkedIn is an amazing place to go. You just type in the company name, comma, title of the position, and or even the guy's name, and it's going to show up, and it's going to tell you their history. It gives you back-end data on things to start a conversation with. I, I met with a company. It's one of the largest fertilizer manufacturers in the, in the United States. It's in Texas. It's called Stoller. I find out the marketing guy graduated from West Virginia University. That's the town we're in. That's the, my home state. That's where I graduated. So you talk about using that is, is, is like ammo. I mean, it immediately started the conversation in a much greater level than it would have if I didn't have that. So from surely a sales individual's standpoint, LinkedIn is an amazing back-end research tool, but to promote the brand, tools like Facebook, even Instagram now, that thing is aging up very quickly. So, you know, several years ago, you know, it was, it was high school and college kids. There were no parents on that, right? It's now 35 to 65 plus is the main demo 
on Facebook, not Snapchat, that's young. Instagram is now aging up as well. 35 to 45 year old females is going up on Instagram. So that's gonna continue with the male sex as well. Luke, how important is it to share somebody else's content or create your own content? Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of both. Um, I think it depends. I'm not a, so you know, I follow Matt, I follow Gary Vaynerchuk, I follow Grant Cardone. I don't even share much of their content. It's just, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm weird in that sense. But I know a lot of individuals and it works very well for them to where if Matt puts something out that I know is gonna provide value to my audience, just like Matt has boxes of his books back there, getting him to send that to a, you to send that to a customer is essentially kind of like sharing a post in real life, in tangible life. Sharing a post are great as long as it provides value. Um, creating your own content I think is great because that opens it up in a different way. That person knows the tone of your voice. They see your energy. You know, they, how many of you follow Grant Cardone? All right, do you guys, have you guys heard of um, Keith Powell, one of his sales guys? They, he, they call him the dominator. I think, and if, if you disagree, feel, please feel free to tell me, I think he is the prime example of someone that gets personal branding inside of a company. He's one of Grant's top performers, but he brands himself all the time, but it's within it's within the Cardone training uh, or Cardone University uh, world, and people associate Heath and Grant, and there's several other people in there, but I know Heath. So when I'm ready to do business, I know Heath, so why am I not gonna ask for Heath? That's, that's the other thing, it's, this can be used as a sales tool. You can manufacture the celebrity to a point to where people know who Heath is so much that when they contact me, like, you know what, I'm ready to, to really get my team on a, on a training program, I know I'm not gonna get Grant Cardone on the phone, so I'm gonna call and ask for Heath. Well, he didn't call and ask for John or Sally or Jack because they didn't say anything or do anything over the past several years. It's the same effort you put into this, the phone and whatever other, you know, your email sequences, anything like that, there needs to be time made out to brand yourself within the company because this is a sales tool. Um, I don't care about it because I think it's fun and I don't browse content on Facebook. The only reason I care about it is because we have built our business 110% off of social media. So why do we not, Luke? Why, 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 why does someone become hesitant? Why does someone not move into this arena? Why do, why do some, and I'm not saying in our office, just in general, yeah. just work the phones? Yeah, absolutely. So habit, repetition, that's what people have always done, and sometimes we're resistant to change. Um, fear of, what if I annoy people? Do, do, you know, my friends and family, do they really want to hear about what I'm doing at work? If you can find a way to make anything valuable, interesting, it's never going to get annoying. I post on Instagram, I'm posting four to six times a day. On Facebook, I'm usually putting a couple photos, live streams, and videos out every day. I am not making somebody feel like I'm selling them. I'm providing value, I'm showing them something interesting, I'm documenting what's going on in my company. George is a great example of this. So George, he's not one of the owners, he's one of the employees, and he puts content out all the time. He has his own little personal brand around some, some things that he's very passionate about and he uses as a platform, but it all reverts back to, and I'm the brand strategist at Impact. I, he puts Whiteboard Wednesdays out about split testing campaigns and things like that. He doesn't have to put that out, I don't make it mandatory. He does it, and people know exactly who he is to where if he was a sales individual, he would probably close 10 times more deals than the other individuals that aren't because he's already got his brand out there at a higher level than several of our other employees who are really talented, they just don't share it. Does that make sense? The fear of, again, not wanting to annoy your audience, your friends, your family. I look at anything that I do, how can I use it to work for me? I don't use social media to to talk about you know, my friends, my family, my wedding coming up, my, you know, I post my dog occasionally to keep it fun and lighthearted, but it, it's a business tool for me. And from day one, it's been a business tool. I have a personal brand page, I have a friend page that you would friend request, and we have our company page. I use them all for business because, I mean, that's 100% what I'm doing at all times. I'm always on, I'm always in business mode. It's what I'm passionate about. That's not the case with everybody, and I get it. You might have, you know, wife, husband, kids, friends, family, and you have to find that balance. But just as much as your, you know, your wife and your two kids are part of your life, this is part of your life as well. And I think that's, that's a big portion of showing that aspect.
um, of your personal brand. Does that make sense? You know, I always use this, let's, let's uh, as we get to the end here, I finish on this. I hope we're together forever. It would be amazing if we finish our careers together. I really, I mean it. But the data tells us that we won't. In fact, LinkedIn only issues a six month and a 12 month employment contract, that's it. Because Reid Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn says, I can only give you maximum production from this company and expect back maximum production for you in six or 12 month intervals, okay? So if I was in the apartment leasing business, I would want a personal brand and a wide audience so that if I left that one apartment complex that I was the leasing agent for and I went to another one, the first thing I would be able to do is fire up pictures of the pool and the three bedroom and the gym mm -hmm. and the dog walking park to be able to recruit people from my audience to come and lease at my new apartment complex, which therefore brings me new value and more value to my new employer. So the reality is I want us to work together forever, but your personal brand matters because you can take it with you to whatever other career you go, okay? That is not something you are going to hear an employer say, ever. But that's how important I believe your personal brand under our brand is. We're on the exact same page because that was that was where I was going to end it with. It's oh, sorry. No, 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 that's perfect. You set it up. That's, that's that's awesome. So I mean, it's it's just a matter of, you know, if, if you're a, if if you bake, all right, your personal brand while here should be on the thing that is your gig. It's your full time job. It shouldn't be on your hobby, right? But you're still practicing and learning those traits to where it's the same thing as I know Facebook so well and it works so well that if the same thing that's happening to Twitter happens to Facebook and it goes away, people are like, well, you invested all that time and energy in it. I don't care. I learned it. These are just communication tools. So when the next one comes up, I'm already going to have a leg up on anybody else that I work with in my new, new position or whatever it is because I learned how to build that following, build that brand, provide value, story tell, and use it as a sales tool. So it's the same thing here. Build your brand within the, the, the company that, you know, this is obviously a great organization that you're set up for success with. So go all in on that. Don't go like, don't dip your toe in the water. And if something happens and you go somewhere else, you're gonna crush there. One of our, one of our good friends, um, he's a car salesman. And he was, a, he was a car salesman at one of the dealerships local to us. And this dealership was a client. And I was telling, I told him, like, man, you need to do live streams. And he started beating live streams up harder than what Grant Cardone does. And he was one of the top sales guys at that dealership. Well, he followed his, uh, a, a girlfriend to a different state, to a dealership he had never met anybody at before. He had no following in the state. And within a few weeks, he's killing it because he knew the tool. He knew how to build a brand. And he made a lot of friends really fast in that community. And that led him to another job that he's now at, and he's changing lives there because he knew how to build a following and brand himself on social media. So don't be here and worry about, well, I want to tell my story about what I brand yourself as the expert in this company. And if you ever go anywhere else, you've just gained one of the most important traits and skill sets um, that you can have in business today because this stuff is not going away. I don't know how many people are on that, how many people are going to see it after it's done, but far more than if we wouldn't have done it at all. Of course. Mm -hmm. Now, how are we doing company-wise? So you guys are experts. I know you looked at the commercial fleet stuff. How are we doing social media-wise as commercial fleet? Sure. So better than a lot, and everything could always be better. So it's the same thing with us. We're marketing experts. We're doing great, but we could even do 10 times better. So it's just a matter of watching what the next big thing is, what, what's going on, what's trans, Facebook's the platform you guys need to be on the most in this company, and then LinkedIn I would say as well. Watch what's coming out next on Facebook. There's messenger ads on Facebook. How can I implement those into our marketing to where if somebody shows interest in it, instead of having them submit as a lead and hoping that you talk to them one day, they can literally click and there's an automated response that says, hey, um, if you have a question, why don't you talk to Matt or why don't you talk to John? Um, and that's with your targeted advertising side of things. But as far as what you guys are putting out, the, the morning scrums are great. I think more of that showing you guys because that's who I'm going to be talking to on the phone and, and the value that this company provides as a whole. You don't have to sell on social media. You, you sell yourself as the expert, and that sells the product. Mm -hmm. So we post a lot of pictures of beautiful trucks, and people say, nice truck, wish I could get one, all that stuff. What about should we push 
zero down, $99 a month for the first 60 days, no age restriction, 22 years in business, income. I mean, what, what other messaging yeah. should we be pushing? So the zero down type things, if you push that, I would make it more of the just in the targeted space, getting it right to the people that you know have been consuming your content. There's ways you can target people that watch the videos on your page that you put out, mm -hmm. uh, that like your page, things like that. I would hit them more with the call to action after you know that the content that provides them value has warmed them up. Testimonials of how you've helped this, you know, this trucking company get from here to here, and images of the beautiful trucks, whatever it is, things that are providing value, I would make that your organic, the non-paid, the everyday or the weekly posting. And then the direct call to actions, like the 0% down, targeting that out to the people that are showing interest in your brand, that are following that online. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's, that's where you guys come. I mean, that's what you guys do. You in guys an extent, I mean, yeah, it, it, in an extent, but a lot of that can be done internally. It just depends on the time, the energy, and the budget you want to put in. I have, we have friends of Impacts that are clients that they, they can afford us some that can't, and they're doing a lot of this on their own. It's just a matter of you know, how that strategy works, but you absolutely can do some of this targeting on your own. And then personal branding-wise, you're, you're all's job. I mean, put your own content out as well, showcasing the company, but absolutely everybody should be showing or sharing, excuse me, the content off of the CFF page to get more exposure there as well. Because you never know that you might have a friend's aunt's cousin that, you know, that somehow finds their way to your post because that person saw it, shared it, and then that, that right individual saw it. It just takes one. What's well, the luckiest thing we have? We're in a business where our competitors are not really in social media. And, and secondly, everybody knows somebody in transportation. Somebody's got a cousin whose brother used to drive a dump truck and now goes over the road. Everybody knows somebody in transportation. Right. So. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah, sure. your time. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, guys, anybody else with any particular questions for Luke? Austin's awesome here? No? Nick Ross, you're our social media young hustler. Come on, man, you got the industry expert. You got any specific questions for him? I how about frequency? Any idea on how, how often? It, it depends on what, what you're putting out. I mean, again, if, if you can, again, document, don't create. Like, you guys are around this stuff every day to where once you figure out, it should just click to where you don't have to look. Like, oh, there's a great piece. I could create content around that. Or I just heard some, overheard something coming out of the conference room. I could create content around that. If, if you can post three, four times a day, even on one platform, and every single thing you're like, this provides value, then post. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're slammed and you can only get one post out that day, I try to get something out every single day, hands down. But again, Instagram, I've grown my following, I'm like 300 people increased in a week because I increased my frequency. And I, 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 I'm not just posting photos like of me traveling around, it's, it's motivational quotes for the audience that follows me on that platform. So I'm four to five to six times a day now. Mm -hmm. And my following and my engagement, my followers are going up because it's providing them value. So frequency, I mean, you try to get something out every single day if you can. If you can get three things out, don't be like, oh, I gotta hold off. I gotta hold it back. If it provides value, let it go. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. I have a question. Now, are you pushing more just words, or are you doing words with a combination of a picture, words with a combination of a video, yeah. or just you doing a live video? I don't know that I'll ever push just the status, just words. Um, maybe on Twitter, it's a different bird, I don't even, <laughs> literally, I don't even like that platform that much. Um, visuals are, you have to think about it, We're every, everybody's ADD, ADHD, we're going like this, all right? So if you don't have something to grab their attention, they're gonna go right past that status. So photos are great, um, graphics are great, videos are the best. And videos are the best way to showcase someone's personality and really get it off your mind. I can say more in a video that's 60 seconds than I can on a five-page blog post. So it's really what your style is. If you're not comfortable on video, then maybe audio, maybe photo, maybe written form is, is your jam. It's just a matter of feeling what you're comfortable with and not forcing something that you're completely uncomfortable with. Sometimes you do have to force that and get comfortable with it if it's a necessity to find that success. Anybody else have any questions before you all get back to grinding? Thanks, buddy. Appreciate yeah, thank you, you so much.